We are at the top of the hour. It is April the 13th, 2021. And we are getting ready to start our session. Remember, as a reminder, this is a public meeting and it is being recorded. We kindly ask that you maintain the same level of decorum as if we were meeting in person. And finally, if you're calling in, please ensure that you have your phone muted and you can do that by pressing star six. And thank you. And thank you for being here today. Um, we'll start this morning with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner O'Grady. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, John. Uh, since 1991, we have recognized National County Government Month by highlighting all of the services and programs that counties provide our residents. The corona, the corona pandemic has offered real life example of the importance of the role county governments play as local health departments have worked tirelessly over this last year and a half um, to protect public health, reduce the spread of infectious diseases. This morning, we wish to congratulate and offer our sincere appreciation to the health commissioner, Joe Mazzola, and our dedicated healthcare partners in Franklin County's Public Health Department for the exceptional work they have done to maintain our community's public health over the past time of this pandemic. As we wrap up National Public Health Week, we thank you on behalf of the Franklin County residents. We are also celebrating the week of the young child. As we learn more about brain development, we are, um, it has become clear that early childhood learning is just as important as K through 12 education. Actually, it's more important. Um, because brain development occurs the most between zero through three, um, the most brain development happens during that time. Since 2017, my colleagues and I have committed more than $4.5 million to help increase community awareness about the importance of high quality early learning and to ensure publicly funded child care providers earn their stars under Ohio Step Up to Quality Rating Improvement System. For early childhood resources, including background on how to find star rated child care providers, as well as to apply for publicly funded child care, go to Step Up to number two, starrated.com. Joy Bivens, do you wanna add anything to this? Is direct, is county deputy administrator here on the call? Commissioner, I don't believe that the deputy has signed in yet this morning. Okay, all right. Um, you can contact Job and Family Services if you have any additional concerns or questions or want to learn more, but certainly step up to number two, starrating.com is where you can get more information. In addition, we are recognizing Black Maternal Health Week, Franklin County Disparities in um, law, it has a long-standing commitment to reducing infant mortality and racial disparities in health outcomes 
It's embedded in our Rise Together blueprint and in our declaration as racism as a public health crisis. Since 2013, the Board of Commissioners has been a founding member of the Greater Columbus Infant Mortality Task Force and has been a lead partner in the Celebrate One initiative since its inception. Is there anything you'd like to share, Ken? Thank you, Commissioner Brown. Um, this is uh, all about health. Um, healthy children, healthy families. Uh, Black Maternal Health Week uh, run, had, is from April, 17th, April 11th to the 17th. Uh, third annual part of the observation of National Minority Health Month. Rates of maternal morbidity and mortality are much higher uh, than in the, in the U.S. than peer nations. It's important to understand the variations in experience between white and minority women in the United States. The uh, BOC in the county has funded numerous initiatives to support black maternal health from pregnancy programs at the Center for Healthy Families to targeted community outreach with Celebrate One, connecting mothers with prenatal care appointments through uh, the physician's care connection. Um, one of the important things that you can do to improve black maternal health is increase access to health care and prenatal care and care for the un and underinsured moms and moms to be. Uh, <clears throat> the federal government has extended the special enrollment period to sign up for health insurance on healthcare.gov through August 15th of 2021. Uh, there are also new tax credits and subsidies available thanks to the American uh, Recovery Plan to that further reduce out-of-pocket costs. Even if you're already enrolled in the marketplace, you can log in to healthcare.com to see if you qualify for the new tax credits to cut down your premium costs. Uh, the healthcare.gov online marketplace can also determine if you're eligible for the state health coverage through Medicaid. You can also learn more about Medicaid by visiting jfs.franklincountyohio.gov forward slash Medicaid. Critical to developing more effective policies and programs to uh, reduce racial disparities and ultimately save mothers' lives. More details can be found at uh, Black Maternal Health Week. Thank you. Thank you. Um, counties also provide vital services for all Americans from issuing birth certificates and marriage licenses to operating 911 call centers. Counties build and maintain parks, community and cultural centers, and are responsible for administering and managing every election. Nationwide, counties spend $554.4 billion, that's billion with a B, dollars in total expenditures annually with the help of 3.6 million county employees and provide support to three, 314 million residents. Throughout April, we'll be sharing interesting facts about counties. Stay tuned to learn about how we in Franklin County serve every resident every day when we release our State of the County report next week. Commissioner O'Grady, do you have anything you wanna to add to the importance of county government before we get on to the next section? Well, you know, we're all county government nerds on this, uh, on this uh, Zoom call this morning, and I could go on and on about county government, but, you know, there's 3,069 counties in the United States, 88 counties in Ohio, and, and I'm proud of uh, Franklin County's rank amongst those uh, 3,069 counties uh, in Ohio, and I'm also very proud of the team that we've assembled in Franklin County. Um, we, we stand out amongst the 3,069 counties. We always have, and, and we will continue to do that because of the strong team that we have in county administration and county leadership. Uh, we have a fantastic group of people. Uh, we have a great group of elected officials. 
uh, amongst the row offices. And <clears throat> so I'm always proud uh, to be able to go join um, all the other elected officials across the country and be able to, and be able to stand up and, and say that I'm a Franklin County commissioner and, and be able to promote what we do here in Franklin County. Uh, this summer in July, <clears throat> I'll be traveling to Prince George's County just outside of Washington, D.C. for our NACO National Association of Counties annual conference. We're going to do a, a hybrid, uh, both, both virtual and in-person conference, and I'll be named the um, chair for the next two years of the large urban county caucus, the 125 largest counties in the country. So uh, I'll be very proud to be able to represent Franklin County amongst the largest counties in the United States. And so um, uh, very, very, very proud of the work that, that all of our staff has done to help get me there um, and, and so, that, so that I can represent all of you. So um, exciting times, exciting stuff, and very proud of, of what Franklin County does, what we do across uh, for the residents and, and of, of the almost the one and a half, 1.3 and a half million people that live in this community um, and very proud of the work that we do here. And John, you've worked very hard to get that role as um, head of the large urban county caucus and that's a great achievement. So thank you for that. And I know that um, you're very active at NACO and that's a great thing. Yeah, tell Savannah I said thanks to you. <laughs> Thank you for your comments. Um, next on the agenda is something that I also know that you've worked hard to put together years ago. And um, we are very excited to welcome our next guest. And so is my dog. Um, <laughs> Savannah um, likes winter sports as well. Savannah is very excited about this too. Um, three times a year, we look very forward to recognizing the state champions from the area high schools. And today we have the student athletes that excelled in their winter sports season working with our partners at Greater Columbus Sports Commission and the Ohio High School Athletic Association it is always a privilege and an honor. Good morning and welcome to all of the student athletes, their coaches, their families that are tuned into this morning's meeting. To kick it off, let's introduce our good friend, Executive Director of the Greater Columbus Sports Commissioner, Linda Logan. Good, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much um, to the commissioners and to the Franklin County staff. I also want to give a nice shout out to Joe Mazzola and the staff of the Health Department for the county, also Dr. Roberts and the city and everyone at, in our state health directors that have worked so hard to keep us all safe and in particular, uh, the fact that we were able to have a uh, return to play for our state championships was very, very important. So with that said, again, thanks to all the work that you all do day in and day out to keep us safe and prosperous. Um, I would like to um, recognize the fact that we have um, a Doug Youth, the yeah, Executive Director of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Um, he'll say a few words. We just know in Columbus, we're very proud to host many state championships. This was a very unusual year for that, but um, happy to recognize three sports uh, this, this week with all of you from 10 area high schools. So Doug, thank you all. I'll hand it over to you. All right, thank you, Linda. And, and uh, thank you commissioners for what you do. Uh, and I echo what Lin Linda talked about from the health department standpoint. Uh, you know, the county health department and the, the city health department and, and even throw into the, the state health department on our behalf, uh, along with the lieutenant governor and the governor for, for believing in our schools and our athletes and our communities that we can run safe events. Uh, and and uh, I'd like to offer congratulations. I know we have not just athletes on here and, and coaches, but there are some uh, athletic administrators on here who made all of this happen. Uh, this year, running a safe event at school, the responsibility of that uh, is tremendous. And so thank you to, to those athletic administrators who are joining us this morning. And, and again, just offer the congratulations to our athletes and, and the coaches. And, 
you know, a lot of times we're, we're moving forward at the OHSAA and we're moving forward into the spring. But uh, I think sometimes you got to take a step back too and look back. And, and when I think about winter sports, I look back in the late mid to late November when we were making the decision to, to play and all the obstacles that our, our athletes were, were faced with. And uh, this past winter and particularly in Franklin County, where you took a long pause uh, and, and dealing with quarantine and, and dealing with things outside of school, uh, uh, those, those type of things. And, uh, you know, to, to get to the point where you're crowned a state champion, uh, especially during this past year, the resiliency that our students and uh, athletes and their coaches and schools and, and, and a message to them, uh, you know, obviously we knew that sports uh, get you around your peers and, and, and it's so good for your, mental wellness and those things. But I want our athletes to understand too, uh, by, by competing and, and, uh, what you have given your families and communities is something different to talk about than the virus. And that's well for everybody and, and not just our student athletes. So thank you so much, uh, for what you've done, uh, this year, uh, to be able to, to stand on the podium and, and be a state champ and, I know I went to every one of our, our state uh, championships all, all year long, fall and winter. And, and uh, you know, I would, uh, just bring tears to eyes standing in Canton uh, watching swimming or, or Marion watching wrestling, uh, watching the bowling, those type of things. And uh, uh, what you've done is, is impressive to win a state championship, but more than that, providing those wellness things for, for so many. So uh, again, thank you. And, and uh, thank you to the commissioners for, for allowing us to join us and show our appreciation today. Thank you, Linda and Doug. When your high school and sport is announced, if your coach or school representative could please unmute your microphone, introduce yourself and your athletes Share a few words about your season, and if there are one or two students available to highlight their experiences. And finally, we always enjoy hearing your next steps following high school from seniors. And Commissioner O'Grady will announce the schools and the staff or coach that are with you. Um, we're gonna hand this off to Commissioner O'Grady to do that. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. So um, a couple of things before we start. One, um, Commissioner Brown mentioned earlier that we started this years ago. Um, we've been doing this for a long time with uh, in working in, in conjunction with the Sports Commission and the High School Athletic Association. One of the reasons we started doing this is um, I was a part of a state championship team when I was in high school. And I remember Columbus City Council bringing our team down to city council chambers and recognizing us uh, on the advent of winning the state wrestling championship, what seems like 150 years ago, which really was only about 39 years ago, but you know, you get the point. To you guys, to you young athletes, it's about the same. Um, but I remember what a great thing it was, uh, not only for me individually, but for our school to be recognized by the community for our accomplishments, for all the hard work that we put in. Um, the other thing I want to, um, and, and so that's why we continue to do this. The other thing I want to say um, and recognize is, you know, <clears throat> we started doing this and then not long after we started recognizing student athletes. Uh, and by the way, we also like to recognize the families and I'll talk about that in just a second. But we also, not, not long after that, Commissioner Brown was very adamant that we, we should recognize not only student athletes, but also recognize other uh, young people of achievement <clears throat> in our high schools. And so Annually, we also recognize um, scholar athletes or scholars, uh, young scholars and young artists. And so annually we do a program where we, we recognize, uh, you know, kids, students that are, that are scholastically very um, uh, uh, successful and kids that are uh, chosen by their schools and school districts uh, for their fantastic abilities in the arts uh, across the spectrum. Because, you know, too often we celebrate kids that are athletes and their athletic achievements. And we forget about kids that are also spectacular student students and spectacular uh, artists. And, and in Franklin County government, we are very much uh, on a regular basis uh, celebrating and investing in kids across the spectrum of 
of achievement and 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 we want to make sure we do that in in our recognitions as well um so what um <clears throat> what we want to do is, is as commissioner said uh, as we go through each school if an administrator and or coach can unmute everybody uh we want you know all the introductions to happen uh make sure that you're introducing yourself Make sure that you're introducing the students and student athletes, talking about the season, the type of season that you had, and certain, and have each of the kids introduce themselves. But we definitely want to hear um, future plans from the seniors. Where you plan, if you've made up your mind, where you plan to go to school, and if you plan on continuing uh, your academic and or athletic career uh, in college, because everybody certainly is interested in hearing about all of that. So let's start with um, the uh, Columbus School for Girls. Division II swim team and coach uh, Brian Botsman. I certainly have an interest here. My older brother is uh, one of your one of your teachers, one of your uh, one of your faculty. Thank you very much. Yeah, we we see Frank around the halls every day. Um, well, give him a hard time when you see him from his little brother. <laughs> Will do. I appreciate you uh, all giving the opportunity to recognize the hard work these kids have put in. My name is Brian Bozeman, the head swimming coach here at Columbus School for Girls. Uh, this year was extremely special because we faced so much adversity. Even our girls, we were out of our own pool for a couple of weeks. And, you know, we weren't even sure in the fall if we were going to have a state swimming championship. And for these girls to rally together and put together some of the most exciting races of that state meet, uh, I'll never forget how we started off that meet with that state record and the medals we by. I've got my four girls here with me, two of them that are seniors that are going to be uh, competing at Ohio State next year. But um, I have Nia Funderburg here. She's a senior. She's going to swim at Ohio State next year. Ava Fortney's going to row at Ohio State next year. Sophomore Olivia Morris, and then also freshman Bethany Spangler. Um, I'm going to let Ava and Nia say a few words as well. Ava? This season was definitely not like we expected. I know last year we came second by just a couple tenths, and it kind of fueled us for the next season. We had our goals in mind, and COVID kind of took us by surprise. Um, we were shut down for a while. Um, we didn't even know if we were going to have a season, but I'm incredibly proud to be part of this relay team. We lost a key member, but that did not matter. We filled the spot, and we all worked hard, and in the end, it paid off. The Naya won her own individual title, and she was also uh the lead off for our medley relay, Naya? Yeah, um, this year I think we've been faced with a lot of the unknown, but what I've talked to myself and what I've tried to teach the team is that we have to take what we know and work with that and improve on that. And um, I think that's something that um, we've all accomplished this year. I'm very proud of my relay, I'm very proud of my team, and I'm very proud of um, Coach Bozeman over here. Um, it's been it's been an interesting season, but um, it's definitely one that I will never forget. It's going to be in the books forever. Well, it's a great accomplishment. I know some of you ladies have been with us before. We ex hope and expect to see you guys back with us in the future. Those of you that are going on to, uh, to perform for the Buckeyes next year, best of luck. Uh, and for all of you, please make sure you give my much, much older brother a very hard time. <laughs> Every time see him in the hallway. We'll do. Thank you. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Congratulations. Thank you. <clears throat> Next up, we have uh, the uh, Dublin uh, Sciota Division One Wrestling State Champion and Coach Adam Huddle. Hi. Uh, I'll start off. Uh, my name's Nick Magistrali. I'm the athletic director at Dublin Sciota High School. Um, a state championship in interscholastic athletics is an extremely significant achievement. Uh, this is ultimately what our student athletes work towards, and those included today have reached the pinnacle of their respective sports. So I just wanted to congratulate all the student athletes and the 10 schools represented here today. On behalf of Dublin City Schools and the Dublin Sciota High School administration and the entire school community, I would like to congratulate Dublin Sciota freshmen Ty Wilson on claiming the 2021 Division I State Championship at 113 pounds. Uh, congratulations also to Dublin Sciota head coach Adam Huddle and his tremendous staff. They've done a, a great job here for us. And uh, with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to coach for a few words. 
Yeah, thanks, Nick. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was a great it was a great season given all the uh, um, hurdles that were put in place. But uh, we had one young man that that's really stepped up as a freshman uh, and won a state title this year, and he won it after being put in a tough spot. And that's what we coach through. And that's what we talk about a lot is the mental fortitude to move forward. This young man lost to his eventual, you know, eventually his state opponent uh, in the finals. He lost in the sectionals and the districts to him. Um, and to be able to come back, but it, his, his voice never changed. He always said, I, I'm going to win this. And uh, we believed him in the support staff. Uh, my, my coaches, his parents, our community, our athletic director that you just heard from, um, we believed in him and uh, he certainly uh, made it happen. So it was not only that, that he beat him, but he also beat the guys that took third and fourth in the tournament and didn't give up a single takedown in the, in the state tournament. So uh, pretty impressive from a freshman uh, to show that mental fortitude. And that's what we're all uh, here to help these young people find. So uh, appreciate it and congratulations, Ty Wilson. Is Ty with us today, Coach? Yes, he was on. Um, we, yes, he's right there. I see him. <laughs> Ty, do you have anything you want to say? Well, I would like to start off by I think all of my coaches at Sayeta, Coach Huddle, and all the other coaches, they really helped me. They showed me important things and helped me strive this season. After that, I would like to thank the team. They kept the practices fun and enjoyable, even the hard ones. Then I would also like to thank Dylan Lee, an amazing drilling partner. Sad to say he's going to have to go because he's a senior. And he just pushed me the whole season. And I pushed him. We made sure that we were both working hard. And then most importantly, I want to thank my father for pushing me throughout my wrestling career so far. He's been there for me every day and pushes me to be a better man, really. Lastly, I would like to thank all of my family and friends who stand behind me. And they really just believe in me. Well, Coach and, and Ty, I tell you what, as a former wrestler, let me just tell everybody on this call what a uh, impressive thing it is, one, to win the state championship in the big school division as a freshman, but number two, to beat the, uh, the second place guy, the third seed and the fourth seed in the same tournament, and to come back and beat a gentleman who's beaten you two times before. All of those things are Unbelievably impressive. That's a uh, now the big challenge for you, Ty, is to come back here three more times and visit us every spring. Number one and number two is to not rest on your laurels and not get a big head. You got to stay humble. And all if you stay humble, you can come back and visit us every spring. We look forward to seeing you. Congratulations, very impressive young man. Thank you. That's some that for you non wrestling fans. That is some impressive, impressive stuff. Congratulations. All right. Uh, let's move on now to, uh, is there anyone in attendance this morning from Upper Arlington uh, High School's uh, Girls Division One swim team? Yeah, we have a chunk here. Oh, good, Great. good. Please introduce yourself. So I'll go ahead. Um, I'm the boys coach. Our girls coach isn't available. Um, any of the nine of our kids are welcome to log on here. We'll kind of tag team it here together um, because That'd we be are great because we had the boys up next. So go yeah, ahead. So um, my name is Mike DeBear. I uh, just finished my 11th year coaching at Upper Arlington High School. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank our administrators, Tony Pusateri, who is retiring here in a few weeks, um, as well as our assistant AD, Spencer Smith. But really, um, the work of all of OHSAA to help make this season possible. Um, you know, we talked a lot this year about, you know, gratitude and thankfulness and not taking things for granted. And, um, you know, it wasn't a year like we've necessarily had before. Um, it's hopefully like a year we will not have again. Um, but getting through it, I think, was important, not just physically, but like you said, mentally for the families, uh, the student athletes and coaches uh, involved. So, um, I will start off by introducing, I'm not sure, we have some uh, state testing going on uh, this morning, so not all of our kids are here, um, but we had five girls and four boys that achieved state championships this year. Um, introducing first, our girls 200 free relay, uh, freshman Lizzie Oliphant, um, juniors Caroline Porterfield and Avery Catalano, and senior Emma Schuler. and Emma will say a couple words here in a couple minutes about her plans for the future. 
Um, and then additionally, uh, Caroline, uh, who I see on my screen, tied her teammate uh, down to the 100th for a state title, Riley Huddleston, uh, in the 50 freestyle. And Riley also won the 100 freestyle. Um, and like I said, only one senior amongst the five uh, young women uh, present here on those teams. On the guys' side, um, we had sophomore Joe Miller, um, sophomore Grant Gooding, uh, who joined seniors Avery Voss and Hayden Jay uh, on the Tour and Free Relay State Championship as well. So uh, we were we were sprint we were a sprint high school this winter, winning both sprint relays. Um, and H Avery uh, was also the individual hundred free uh, state champion. As teams, uh, the boys finished as runner up uh, in the top public school in the state for the second straight year, uh, and were district champions for the second straight year. Uh, the young ladies finished third as a team and district runner up. Um, so at this point, I guess I'll let Emma um, so, say her plans for next year and any thoughts she might have. Hi everyone, I'm Emma Schuler. Um, on behalf of all of our teammates, uh, we would like to begin by thanking all the admission, our commissioners for this recognition. It's definitely a huge honor and it's definitely special to be able to represent um, Upper Arlington High School as a state champion, we are proud to represent the school and continue this tradition of excellence. And this definitely would not have been possible without the support and motivation of our teammates. Um, and we'd also like to show our appreciation towards all the administration and coaches for making this season possible. Next year, I'll be continuing my academic and athletic career at Miami University. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Hayden, if you want to introduce yourself then. Uh, sure. Uh, I'm Hayden Jay. Um, and I, I think everyone would agree um, the, the theme of this season or this past season was um, uh, making the best of a bad situation. Um, and I would like to thank uh, all the administration, uh, all the families, all the coaches uh, and my teammates for um, making this season happen. Um, and I'm, I'm really proud of uh, the four guys I got to uh, swim with on that 200 freestyle relay. Um, I think we, we did indeed make uh, the best of a bad situation. Uh, I'd like to con congratulate you, uh, especially um, Joe Miller and uh, uh, Grant Gooding. Um, I expect big things from, <laughs> from you guys in uh, the seasons to come. Thank you. And what are you doing next year, Hayden? Oh, yeah. Uh, I am uh, continuing my athletic and academic careers at Virginia Tech. Fantastic. Congratulations, guys. And Avery, our last senior. Hi, my name's Avery Voss. Next year, I'll be continuing my swimming career at Stanford University, and I plan on uh, majoring in some sort of engineering. I'm not sure uh, which kind yet, but I just like on behalf of my team, I'd just like to thank all of you commissioners for the great recognition and our school administrators and the Ohio High School Athletic Association for allowing our season to happen. Congratulations. That's impressive. Congratulations. Impressive to all three of you. Let me see if I can say this uh, to you, you, you young ladies and gentlemen without, uh, in, in a delicate enough way, without being offensive and at the same time, um, being as, as congratulatory and as proud of you as I can possibly be. As a young, as a young person, when I, rep, I, I rep, wrestled and represented for uh, represented a school, uh, just a small school on the west side of Columbus with a bunch of working class folks, but we were a dynasty. We wrestled, I wrestled on what I believed still to this day to be the best high school wrestling team that Central Ohio has ever produced. And when we wrestled, uh, Upper Arlington or competed against Upper Arlington because of what Emma said, the tradition of excellence, athletic excellence that, that Upper Arlington had, it went, I mean, frankly, it goes at least as far as I know back to Jack Nichols. It, I took special pride every time I walked out on a mat in beating a golden bear because of the tradition of excellence, just like people did when they walked out on the mat and beat a Bishop Reedy Silver Knight on the wrestling mat back in those days. Today, it's not the same, and you guys probably don't know what I'm talking about. But back in those days, beating somebody from my team for everybody else was a source of pride. 
beating a, a golden bear in, in, in swimming or beating a golden bear in golf or beating a golden bear in certain sports is a source of pride. Back in those days, for me, beating a, a golden bear in, in wrestling, even though, you know, I mean, it was a source of pride because of that tradition of excellence that Emma talked about. So you should be very, very proud of the school and community that you represent for that reason, that tradition of excellence that was started all those years before you and that you guys now continue on. Congratulations to all of you. I hope that was delicate enough, but at the same time showed you what I exp expressed to you what I was trying to talk about. Anyway. Congratulations, guys. All right, moving on. Now, this next school uh, that I'm going to call on, it, it, sh it shows all of our, uh, hopefully shows all of our neighbors just how neighborly Franklin County can be. Is there yeah. anyone here today uh, from Olin Tangy uh, Liberty High School and the Division I wrestling champion? Hello. Hello. Hey, welcome, Coach. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm Mark it's Marinelli. Good to see you, Mark. Oh, likewise. I'm I'm Mark Marinelli from Olentangy Liberty Wrestling. I'd like to thank the Greater Columbus Sports Commission and the Franklin County Board of Commissioners. I'd like to congratulate all the other programs and sports for having a successful year, and I'd also like to thank um, our Superintendent Mark Rafe, Olentangy Liberty High School Principal Mike Starner, and our Athletic Director Darren Meeker. And so, uh, Dylan, I'd like to talk a little about Dylan. Uh, he had a really great year, and he was able to overcome some of the adversity. And one of our goals at Liberty is to be able to facilitate maximum learning for our wrestlers. And he, he was able to learn all year through some mistakes and also through some um, losses. And eventually, at the end, he was able to overcome those and learn from them and be able to formulate a game plan to beat some opponents that had beat him earlier. And he's had a really great year. Our team had a really great year. We're really proud that we were able to uh, compete at a high level all year long and represent our school district uh, at the highest level. And uh, well, again, we'd like to thank you and congratulate all the other ones. I'd like to have Dylan say a few words. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Dylan Russo. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone that Mr. Melanelli just spoke about. And I'd also like to thank the Board of Commissioners for having me here today. Um, the first people I would like to thank are my Liberty coaching staff and my Team Rod coaching staff. Uh, they supported me and pushed me through the adversary, adversary we had to overcome this season and uh, just helping me throughout uh, my season, uh, achieving my goals and learning. Uh, most importantly, I want to thank my mom and my dad, and my family for um, supporting me throughout my career and especially through this tough season we had. Um, I'm just very thankful for my support group and my family. And I am very proud to represent Old Tangy Liberty. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Great to see you, Dylan. Congratulations. Hope to have you back. Uh, coach Marinelli, it's good to see you again. And Dylan, you got a superstar coach there. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> no, I shouldn't have said that with him in the room, but, you know. He's got a big enough head as it is. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hope to have you back next year. Yep, thank you. All right. Uh, next up, we have Gahanna Lincoln High School's Division One bowling team and their coach, Coach Yvonne Kiero. Good morning, everyone. And I, too, want to say thank you very much for giving us an opportunity to be here. Um, I This is only my fourth year of coaching. And believe it or not, this is the third state championship for our Gahanna Lincoln Division I girls bowling. Um, I've had an opportunity to be the head coach for the last two years, and um, I can't tell you how excited I am for these girls to have accomplished what they did. We'd like to thank our AD, who is always there and always uh, ready to be there, uh, Catherine Harris, um, and our coaching staff. Um, we have a coaching staff of three people, only one of which myself could be here today, but it's with all of those people that we are able to accomplish what we can and um, lend our knowledge to these girls to accomplish what they have. With us today, we have Casey Burns, who is our freshman, 
and Lilu Smith, who is our senior. Um, these girls went through a lot to accomplish what they did this season. With COVID, we too were not very sure that we were going to have a season because, of course, bowling is in an enclosed area. So mm -hmm. we took every precaution that we could, and this team was ready to do whatever they could or had to to be able to be on the lanes this year. So I'm incredibly proud of the girls and what they've accomplished. Um, this is a big deal for the central division in girls bowling. We are the only team to have won that state championship and to have it three times is just an amazing feat. And I'm so very proud of them. I'd like to allow Lilu to say a few words. We have very few people here because we too had state testing and poor Lilu is in her car because she's on her way to get a COVID vaccine. So we thank her for taking the time uh, to say a few words to you. <laughs> Lilu. Thank you, Coach. Um, it was definitely an unpredictable season, um, but I'm glad like we were able to push past everything. We were still able to have a season, even if it, all of our matches and everything were condensed into one month. But yeah, I, I'm very proud of my team. I'm very proud of the staff we have and everything. They worked very hard this season to give us all the opportunities that we could. Um, so my future plans, I will be attending Valparaiso University to major in the engineering, and I'll be bowling for them as well. Great. That's awesome. So this school, I have an affinity for, a special affinity for, I've got two grandsons at the high school. One's a junior and one's a freshman, um, the Piccolo Antonio boys, Max and Vincent. And they're in track. And we have um, been following what's going on at the schools. And you do, you, you're all doing great things at um, Gahanna schools. And we're very proud of you all. Yeah. Extra proud. Great season, Lulu. Great season, Coach. Um, that's fantastic. I can see that you're going to carry on. Uh, at, at uh, Valparaiso and uh, Lilu, if you need to roll up your sleeve anytime soon, we will not worry about that at all. We uh, <laughs> glad to see you're getting vaccinated this morning. Thank so, you. Yeah. Great that you're getting that, and yeah. that's great news. Yeah. Um, well, congratulations to both of you. And coach, we expect to see you back next year, coach. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere yet. We have we have a lot of returning juniors, and of course, Casey as our freshman stepped up this year in in tight spots. So we're very proud of her as well. Um, yeah. This is a great group of girls, and they work really really well together. They know how to pull each other up when when one is struggling, and you know when you look at a state championship we don't typically have people in the first team of the all tournament team. Our team is a real team. We work very good together. Uh, the girls work hard together and they put in a lot of work to accomplish what they did. So we're very, very proud. Great. Well, congratulations, everybody. Thank you for having us and congratulations Thanks. to all of the other athletes and Absolutely. coaches that are here. Great. Thank you. All right. Next, we have Dublin Kaufman High School's Boys and Girls Division One Swim Team Champions and Coach Steve Von Schritz. Hi, good morning. My name is Val Lawrenson. I am the um, assistant principal at Dublin Kaufman, and I am here with our outstanding um, three state champions. Unfortunately, Coach C couldn't be here today. So uh, okay. I just wanted to thank you for this opportunity and this honor. Um, and I'm going to let each one of them speak and um, introduce themselves. So thank you for the um, recognition. Thank you. Hi, I'm freshman Emily Brown, and I won the 500 and 200 free. Oh. And um, I'm just so thankful for this opportunity and so excited to be here. And thank you for your time and inviting us. Hi, um, I'm senior Ellie Andrews, and I won the 100 breaststroke. Um, I will be attending the University of Texas at Austin this coming fall. 
And I'm just really thankful, um, not only for the recognition, but I'm thankful for um, our coaches um, over the past four years working with me and um, just being really great support systems. Also, all of our families, not only our three families, but um, all the families on the team just being a really good support system as well, and then our teammates. So thank you guys so much for recognizing us today. Hi, I'm Junior Zach Stump. I won the 500-yard freestyle. I would just like to thank, thank you for this opportunity and having us on. I'd like to thank um, family, coaches, everyone who will help this rough season be a lot easier. And what year are you? I'm a junior. Junior, gotcha. Well, congratulations, everybody. Fantastic thank work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, for at least a few of you, we hope to see you back. Uh, we'd like to make this an annual thing for everybody. If we can, everybody keep working hard. Congratulations. And Thank do you, you. Uh, the lady that's going off to Texas, do you plan to swim next year? Oh, yes. I'm swimming for the University of Texas in Austin. Sorry. Awesome. <laughs> I'm right. undecided on what I'm doing, but I know I'm swimming, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> that's good for wonderful. You. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. We'll move on. Oh, we're staying with the Rocks. We're going to be with Dublin Kaufman High School Division One wrestling champion. Uh, and Coach Chance Van Gundy, who is also the Central District Coach of the Year. Coach, are you with us? Well, the assistant principal's with us. Yeah, I don't see Chance on here. I'm not sure if he received the invitation. So I'm, a, I'm really sorry for that. Can you say anything at all about your division? One yeah, I actually, my son is actually part of the um, rocks wrestling program. And um, I can say more about chances um, program that he has created at this school. Um, Seth uh, won for the second year. Um, he won as a freshman and then again, as a junior and uh he is verbally committed to Ohio State, um, but we have him for one more year, so we're really excited about that. What's Seth's last name? Shuming. Seth, Seth Shuming. And what weight class do you know? Uh, one, eight, uh, 190. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. And then Chan Coach Van Gundy was also the Central District Coach of the Year this year. Yes. And he has created an amazing program. He has an, a great support system around him. And uh, we know that next year is going to bring a lot of success. So we look forward to the next season. Great. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All righty. Future Buckeye. All right. Next we have um, from New Albany High School, the girls division one swim team. I'll tell you what, Central High's got some fantastic swimmers. Coach, how are you? How are you today, coach? Good. My name is Dave Wharton. I'm with, uh, I'm the head coach at Wildman High School. Been there for 23 years. Want to just say thank you to all of you for recognizing these wonderful athletes um, in all the sports. Um, our theme this year was a lot. My biggest comment at the at the athlete meeting at the beginning for the parents and the coaches and the and the athletes all involved is flexibility. We had no idea what this roller coaster of a ride was going to be this year and. Uh, the, the team really responded with every change that we had to make with every, you know, whether it was less practice, more practice, odd times, you know, odd group size, everything else. And that goes across the board with all of the athletes in all the sports, the wrestling, swimming, basketball, everything. Um, but to, to compliment everybody's decisions as to what we could do, these athletes were itching for every opportunity to practice and to compete because that's what they really wanted to do. And to me, that really helped them with their mental health all the way through uh, the season. Besides their performance, we, we set school records. We performed at a high level. Uh, we've got five athletes here that uh, won two titles in the, uh, the relays. Uh, so I'll, I'll let the three girls that are on here, Ava Lachey and Olivia Favorka, are in testing and we're not able to be, be on today. But um, the other three girls, Ash and Sydney and Carly, are here. So uh, girls, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Carly Meeting. I'm a sophomore, and I was part of both the 200 medley relay and the 403 relay. 
Sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ashley Moore, and I was a, I'm a freshman, and I was a part of the 400 relay. My, I'm a senior, Sydney Bowles, and I am attending uh, Florida State University next year for swimming. And I'm not sure yet what I want to study, but I was a part of the 200 medley relay. Fantastic. Congratulations, young ladies. Good job. Uh, we expect to see a good, best of luck to uh, you. Uh, what you say? Your name is Ashley that's going on to Florida State? Uh, my name's Sydney. I'm going to oh, Florida Sydney, State. Sydney. Here. Yeah. Sorry about that. Congratulations, Sydney. Good luck to you with the Knowles next year. And to the other two of you, we hope to see you guys back. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Great job. Great job. All right. Uh, we now have uh, another swim team, the uh, Olentangy uh, High School in Lewis Center, Division I uh, girls state champions, uh, Coach uh, Calvin Higdon. Uh, hi there. My name is Calvin Higdon, uh, coach for the girls and boys swimming at uh, OHS. Um, our two state champions were Cameron Kerger and uh, Martina Peroni. So if either of them are on, uh, they can say something. Um, but to see those two girls progress through the last uh, three years, both of them are juniors, uh, to start out their freshman year, you know, making the podium in the state meet and then progressing to state runner-ups last year and then for this year battling through a tough season uh to both be state champions uh it's amazing they both work really really hard so uh well deserved um you know i appreciate every uh, all the support uh from olentangy high school from our our, <coughs> our uh, principal uh and uh from our uh from jay wolf our athletic director so if either of them are on here and they want to say something, they can do that. I don't know if either of them are. I'm not seeing them, Coach. Okay. But yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the uh, recognition. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Thank and they're you. both juniors? They're both juniors, Coach? Yeah, they're both juniors. We'll tell them next year when they're seniors and they win again, we expect them to have them with us. <laughs> Uh, definitely, will do. Thank you. All right, move to Westerville North High School Division One Wrestling Champion and Coach David Grant and AD Wes Alfreds. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I want to thank you, uh, Commissioner O'Grady and Commissioner Brown, for uh, for for doing this for our our student athletes here in Central Ohio. This is very cool that you guys do this. I want to thank. Uh, Commissioner Ute and the OHSAA for uh, getting us through uh, two seasons so far and the spring's going well so far. Uh, congrats to all the other coaches and athletes um, as well. My name is Wes Hillifritz. I'm the athletic director here at Westerville North. I'm honored to have uh, this guy over here behind my uh, left shoulder, our, our division one state champion at 145 pounds, junior Connor Uten. Um, and I'll introduce coach, coach Grant here in a second. Uh, one of the coolest things for us this year, Commissioner, is we had four young men that qualified for last year's state tournament. And uh, minutes before getting ready to head to the shot, uh, we, we had the unfortunate you know, opportunity to share with them the tournament had been canceled. Uh, luckily for us, all four of our young men were underclassmen. Uh, so with all the drive and dedication they could muster, they worked out all year and, and worked with our coaching staff and um, Every single one of them made it back uh, and got to compete at Hilliard Derby awesome. in this year's state tournament. So three of those young men were seniors. Uh, so we were, and two of them were placers, uh, along with Connor, our junior. So that was uh, a very cool moment. After everything they lost out on last year, to be able to get all four of them back uh, was tremendous. So uh, I want to congratulate our, our head coach, David Grant. Uh, we won back-to-back -back league titles, which was a big deal, as tough as our league is here in the OCC. Um, he's been coach of the year numerous times and just uh, not only does great things with these guys on the mat, but uh, is, a, is a pretty much a father figure for them off the mat as well. Um, can't say enough about Connor. David will talk about Connor as a wrestler, but um, just an even better young man that represents his school and community so well. So uh, with that said, thank you again. Um, and I'll turn it over to coach Grant. Good morning, everyone. Um, 
what I like to say about Connor is Connor is a great wrestler, but he's even a better teammate. He's an awesome student, and uh, he just walks around the room leading everyone as he's getting his own work done. Uh, right after winning his state title, doesn't take a break, comes in to welcome the freshmen uh, and eighth graders coming next year and, and starts coaching them right away. He didn't disappear on me. So thank you very much for that, Connor. Um, his wrestling career, Connor has been a three-time district champion, a three-time sectional champion, and uh, has been to the tournament three times. And this year he, he won it. So congratulations to Connor. I'll turn it over to him. Yeah, so thank you, Coach. Uh, I'd just like to say thanks to everyone in this meeting for uh, recognizing us, and as well as all the other state champions this uh, past winter season. Um, I think I can speak for all of us in saying that there was a lot of uh, hard hurdles to get over, and um, fortunately, uh, we were all able to have our state tournament. We did very well. Um, I'd like to think that all of us were able to put on um, – let everyone know how hard we've worked with um, our performances at the tournament. Well, congratulations. Appreciate uh, all the hard work and dedication you put in and uh, the struggle of having to miss last year, but getting back there this year. Um, you know, all of the programs, the wrestling programs that, that are on, that have been on today are, are just traditional, uh, fantastic wrestling programs, but Westville North has been a, wrestling uh, strong wrestling program for a long long time i remember wrestling at west world north when i was in high school so uh it's a proud tradition there it's good to see you carry it on young man good job look to see you back here again next year as well commissioner o'grady yes sir i have a couple of assistant coaches you might recognize adam and dominic sabato yeah they're, they're nobody says they're good guys you know but you can tell them hello <laughs> i will i will that is a fantastic, fantastic family. Uh, and if they're your assistant coaches, I look for big things from your program for a long time. The, the, they are uh, they're part of a dynasty, that's for sure. Thank you very much. Tell them I Thank said, you. Coach Grant. I have to tease them. I grew up with those guys. They're, they're the younger brothers of some, some – and they're both uh, many times state champions. So that's going to be a great program coming forward. Uh, and finally, we have Hilliard Darby High School Division I wrestling champion and Coach Brendan Moody. Coach Moody has the Central District Coach of the or uh, Wrestler of the Year, a young man who's getting ready to go play football for Ohio University. So, hello, everyone. I'm Chris Levin. I'm the athletic director here oh. at Hilliard Darby High School. Um, and we just want to thank all the commissioners on their on this call. Uh, for recognizing these student athletes. Um, thank you guys for doing that. Also, I'd like to thank Mr. Yu and Ohio High School uh, for allowing us the opportunity to have a season this year. Um, similar, uh, Wes, uh, we sat here um, getting ready uh, to go to the state wrestling tournament last year and it got canceled. And I had to, had to tell Bradley, hey, you know, things, things aren't going to happen this year, but we were fortunate to have him as an underclassman as well. Um, and he got to come back this year in full circle. We held the uh, Division I district championships, and Bradley was the last match um, of the tournament, and he ended up winning. Um, he was our first state champion ever in wrestling, so we we're proud of um, all the accomplishments that Bradley has done. Uh, and I will turn it over to Coach Moody now to speak a little bit uh, on Bradley's behalf. Thanks, Chris. Uh, I'd also like to thank the board for uh, inviting us and celebrating all these student athletes and, and uh, their achievements. I think it's, it's wonderful. Um, and with a, a season this year that I, I didn't even know if it was ever going to actually happen, um, to not only have it happen, but um, to have so many people at Hilliard Darby come up with ideas to allow us to have a wrestling season. Uh, we were lucky to have uh, over 40 participants on our team. So we were split into six separate pods with six separate coaches leading each pod in uh, three different practice facilities. So uh, there were a lot of challenges. And I think it says a lot about uh, Bradley Weaver to navigate those challenges to how do you be a leader when five sixths of your own team is not even at practice with you. Uh, and he still found a way to do it. And, uh, and then w w same thing with our team hosting the district and the state tournament. 
Uh, while that's a privilege, it's a burden too. There was a lot of work that went involved and I'm really proud of everybody that was involved in that. And to have Bradley be the last match on Sunday night of the state tournament um, and to win a state title, our first one for the school, it was very special. And, uh, you know, he, he's a special individual that really takes care of the details, uh, not only in wrestling his whole life. And um, it comes into every practice with a smile on his face. He enjoys it. Um, and if you can find fun uh, uh, in the sport of wrestling, then I think you can you can enjoy pretty much any atmosphere that you jump in. So I'm really excited about his future. And uh, I'll let uh, Bradley take it away. Hey, thank you, Coach. Thank you, everyone, for having us here. It's an honor to be here and represent uh, Franklin County and Hilliard Derby High School. Um, I want to thank my coaches and teammates for working hard with me in practice every single day, but also having fun. Going to practice wasn't was probably my highlight of my day every single day, and that was just probably the best way to cap it off at the end of the year. Home gym, first time state champ, with the all the Derby wrestling community around me and the extra support. And I want to thank the whole Derby wrestling community for that. I also want to thank my family and friends for being there at home too, because every single time I'd have a good day or a bad day, my family's always there uh, at the end of the day to, to welcome me home. Bradley, where, uh, where I see your shirt, uh, you want to tell everybody what you're doing, what your plans are for next year? Uh, yes, so I'm uh, I'm gonna go play football at Ohio University, and I got accepted into the school of business, so I'll be studying business next year. Congratulations, congratulations! So I'm a uh, I'm a Davidson parent. Apologize, uh, don't have, didn't have any kids on a football team, so or the wrestling team, so it's you know it's okay. My daughters are softball players, so uh, but been been paying attention to you for a while. You're an amazing kid, amazing athlete. Congratulations to you. Well deserved. Congratulations. You. And you know, did we miss anybody? Yeah. That's not on our list. Just gonna um, speak up if we didn't call your name, your school. I think we were pretty thorough. We even included I think schools from, so. from Delaware. I think there, so. so. What um, what we'll be doing is sending certificates signed by the Board of Commissioners to each of the champions. And um, we thank everybody for being on this call, all the students, all the coaches, all the assistant principals, um, all the administrators. This has been a really good effort to recognize all the champions. And what I'd like to just add is I want to thank, and I hope the athletes understand, and we heard it from a couple of the athletes, you can't do this alone. And it really takes your families behind you. Um, maybe it's your parents, maybe it's your grandparents, aunts, uncles, whoever it is, you can't do this alone. And um, I hope you understand that when you're a student athlete, you need people to take you to practice, to be there with you. Um, this is wonderful what you've achieved, but you've got other things going on in your life and this is really important but it's it's really the other things too that will make you who you are and i know commissioner o'grady will offer a message that he knows to be true from his athletic career but i just want to say that you're work as an, a student athlete will help you in whatever you do um, as an adult. So take this experience and let it help you. And I want to congratulate all of your families for being behind you and with you as a partner. Commissioner O'Grady. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. As, as a parent now of athletes, uh, couldn't have been better said. Um, and, and, oh, and oh, by the way, not just not just parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles, don't forget to thank your, your siblings because they put up with all of your grief um, and don't always do it willingly or happily. 
Uh, so don't forget to thank them. Yeah. The best I would give that I always try to remind the athletes when they're on here is uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful thing in your life. This is a huge accomplishment. And some of you have heard me say this if you've been on here before, but don't let this be the biggest thing that you ever accomplish in your life. Use this as a springboard to go on and accomplish greater things with your life. If you, if you're, you know, our age, if you're in, you know, in your forties or fifties, we're in our, you know, I'm in my fifties now and you look back on your life and this is the biggest thing you ever accomplished. That shouldn't be, you should use this as an accomplishment to, as a springboard to go on and accomplish much bigger things. Um, you know, glory days are glory days. You know, you're always going to have people in your life that are going to remind you of your glory days. And that's great. It's going to be wonderful to look back on these things and reminisce. But if all you ever do is look back on your glory days as the most wonderful memories of your life, then you haven't, you have, when you're 40, 50 years old, you haven't lived your best and most fullest life. So use these accomplishments, these, these, these wonderful championships as springboards to something greater. This past week, as an example, just this past week, my high school baseball coach, we put back in my day, we, you know, a lot of us played three sports, which is unheard of these days. And if I had to do it over again, I probably wouldn't have. I, I most, I definitely wouldn't have. But my high school baseball coach sent a, a handful of us uh, some text messages, you know, and they were tell, he was telling everybody what great, what a great week it was for our high school baseball team and told everybody, you know, I hit three home runs this past week, 39 years ago. Well, I didn't remember that. Why would I remember something like that? But <laughs> and he sent it to myself and the pitchers on my team that had big victories that week in a big season because we had a big season. And then my buddies, you know, posted things on Facebook and sent me text messages thanking me for helping them win games, you know, that we might not have won had I not hit those home runs. That was fantastic. It was wonderful. I got a big pat on my back. I got to relive a glory days. Well, you know, truth be told, if I had to do it all over again, I probably wouldn't have played baseball when I was in high school because I would have played football and I would have wrestled. And so, but it was wonderful after almost 40 years to have that glory day. But I didn't remember it. I didn't think about it. I didn't, you know, so what? But the point being, I've done so many other things in my life that were much more wonderful than those glory days since those days back in the early 80s, you know, when before you guys were even thought of. Uh, so make sure that these, these wonderful accomplishments that you have now are springboards, not the biggest thing you ever do in your life. They should be something that's a catalyst for huge accomplish, accomplishments down the road. So congratulations to all of you. It's wonderful. You, sh you and your parents and your families should be proud of everything you've done. And we hope to see some of you back here next year. And we hope that the rest of you that are going off to college go on to wonderful, big, fantastic adventures. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, and thank you, Linda. Such a great group. Thank you all. Such a great Congratulations. group. Yeah. And Linda, we appreciate you bringing them all to us over here. Yeah. We are going to get back to our regular agenda. We'll need the approval of the minutes of April 6, 2021 general session, the April 8, 2021 briefing session, and the April 5, April 7, 2021 administrative briefings. Move approval of the minutes. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Thank you. The minutes have been approved. County Engineer. We begin with a public hearing this morning, Commissioner. Okay. Um, I'd like to open the public hearing for this resolution. Oh, do you want to read the public hearing? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> Resolution regarding plans approved for the 2021 resurfacing program for various Franklin County roads, Franklin County, Ohio. All right, I'd like to open the public hearing for this resolution. Is there anyone here in the audience who would like to speak on this public hearing? 
Okay, seeing none, I'd like to close the public hearing and have the clerk read the resolution into the record. Thank you, Commissioner. Resolution number 263-21. Plans approved for the 2021 resurfacing program for various Franklin County roads, Franklin County, Ohio. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. My name is Cornell Robertson, Franklin County engineer for every resident, every day, state champions, and all competitors in Franklin County. Commissioners, before I proceed, I would like to say thank you for that recognition of state champions. You know, I've participated in general sessions for many years, and I've always enjoyed that program. It's a nice reminder to hear from our, our constituents as to the importance of the service we provide in county government. So thank you. Commissioners, this first resolution is our annual resurfacing program for various county roads. This is separate from our annual township resurfacing program that we are currently assembling and will bring to you in the near future. This year's county program is estimated at $3.4 million and includes 18 miles of resurfacing of 20 Franklin County roads as follows. Alton and Darby Creek Road, Dellinger Road, Gantz Road, Hayden Run Road, Hayes Road, Hilliard Cemetery Road, Rome Hilliard Road, Hubbard Road, Lambert Road, Lukens Road, McNaughton Road, No Bixby Road, Old Hahn Road, Orders Road, Reynoldsburg New Albany Road, Richardson Road, Roberts Road, Scioto and Darby Creek Road, Walnut Street, and Winchester Pike. If not already, I will deliver the title sheet to Clerk Clerk Hendon Lane for you all to approve and sign. Then we will schedule the program for competitive bid opening. Pending any questions, I ask for your approval of this resolution. Uh, move approval two sixty three twenty one. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Grady. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Resolution number 26321 has been adopted and Mr. Engineer, I am in possession of the plan. So thank you. Thank you. Resolution number 26421, establishing altering and widening of Cleveland Avenue from Huey Road, Township Road number 79 to Cook Road, County Road number 80, Clinton Township, Franklin County, Ohio, declared necessary. This capital improvement project is in the Northeast part of the county in Clinton Township along Cleveland Avenue from Huey Road to Cook Road. It is a cooperative project among Franklin County, Clinton Township, and ODOT, utilizing federal safety funding to improve pedestrian safety and access management along the corridor. This resolution is the first in a series of two to declare the project necessary. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Move, uh, if there's no questions, I'll move approval of resolution 264-21. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 26421 has been adopted. Resolution number 26521, replacement or rehabilitation of various bridges and structures in Franklin County, Ohio, declared necessary. Commissioners, this is a similar resolution. This one declares three bridges necessary as follows for rehabilitation or replacement. Beach Road Bridge over Big Darby Creek in Brown Township, Frank Road Bridge over Early Run in Franklin Township, and Treby Road Bridge over Sido Point Drive in Perry Township. Approval of this resolution will allow us to begin engineering design work for each one. I respectfully request your approval. If there are no questions, I'll move approval of resolution 265-21. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Resolution number 26521 has been adopted. Thank you all very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Court of Common, please. Resolu excuse me. Resolution number 26621. Resolution authorizing the president of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners to execute a memorandum of understanding with the Franklin County Court of Common Pleas and Franklin County Sheriff's Office related to the fiscal year 2022-2023 targeted community alternatives to prison grant program in the amount of $4,500,000.
Good morning, Commissioners. Jennifer Goodman, Director for Common Pleas, and joining me this morning is Kimberly Canada, the Director of Finance for the Court, as well as uh, Melissa Pearson, who is the Interim Director for Office of Justice Policy and Programs. This MOU commits Franklin County to participation in the Targeted Community Alternatives to Prison, or TCAP, which prohibits certain felony five offenders from being sentenced to prison. In order to supervise these offenders locally, the state, through this grant, will provide Franklin County $4.5 million over the next two fiscal years. A portion of this funding will be utilized by the court to offset the cost of probation officers supervising this population of offenders, and the remainder of the funding will be utilized for programming, treatment, and transitioning offenders into stable housing. Pending any questions, I request approval of this resolution. If there's no questions, I'll move approval of 260. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 26621 has been adopted. Thank you. Domestic relations. Resolution number 26721. Resolution authorizing innovation agreement with Evertest LLC doing business as EverHealth. Good morning, Commissioners. Barb Reeves, Deputy Director. This resolution is requesting the approval of a name change from Fairfield Information Services to Evertest DBA EverHealth. The contract was originally awarded in February of 2020 for drug testing services. All other terms and conditions of the contract remain unchanged. Pending any questions, the court requests the approval of this resolution. There's no questions. I'll move approval 267-21. Second. Moved in second and voting. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 26721 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Child support enforcement. Resolution number 26821. Resolution authorizing an independent contractor agreement with Cassandra Young for program consulting services in the amount of $6,890. Good morning, Commissioners. Susan Brown, Director, representing the Franklin County Child Support Enforcement Agency. This resolution requests your consideration in approving an independent contractor consulting contract with Cassandra Young beginning April 1st, 2021 through September 30th, 2021, with two options to renew in the amount not to exceed $6,890. The contract follows federal guidelines for professional consulting services and is eligible for federal financial participation. The purpose of this contract is to reimburse Cassandra Young for professional services associated with the development of behavioral science training materials and modules, providing training presentations to staff and transferring knowledge in behavioral diagnosis and design and behavioral science interventions to our social program developers and to our staff. Each unit of service for this contract is defined as an hour or portion of an hour it takes to perform the services outlined in the scope of, of work. Pending any questions, I request that this resolution be approved. If there are no questions, I'll move approval of resolution 268-21. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 268-21 has been adopted. Thank you very much. Thank you, Susan. Economic development and planning. Resolution number 269-21, resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for David A. Escobedo. Good morning, Commissioners. Jenny Snap, Assistant Director at Economic Development and Planning. Um, this morning, we have a number of lien releases to take you through, and I'm going to have Emily Hillier in our office. She's our senior program coordinator in the Community Development Division take you through these lien releases. Thank you. This is Emily Hillier, senior program coordinator for economic development and planning. Um, the property owner received a home loan for $4,118 from Franklin County. The requirements of the housing loan have been satisfied. The property taxes are paid in current, and I would respectfully ask that the commissioners sign the discharge of mortgage instrument on this property. If there are no um, for any, if there are questions, I'll move approval of 269 and 21. Second. 
Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner O'Grady? Uh, yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 269-21 has been adopted. Resolution number 270-21, resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Elizabeth McBride. This property owner received a home loan for $18,827.76 from Franklin County. The requirements of the housing loan have been satisfied. The property taxes are paid in current. And I would ask that the commissioner sign the discharge of mortgage instrument on this property. If there are no questions, I'll move approval of 270-21. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 270-21 has been adopted. Resolution number 271-21, resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Elizabeth Hawk. This property owner received a home loan for $4,100 from Franklin County. The requirements of the loan have been satisfied. The property taxes are paid and current. And I would ask the commissioner sign the discharge of mortgage instrument on this property. If there's no questions, I'll move approval of 271-21. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner O'Grady. Uh, yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Resolution number 271-21 has been adopted. Resolution number 272-21. Resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Coffee Naki and Oblavi C. Naki. These property owners received a home loan for $4,000 from Franklin County. The requirements of the loan have been satisfied. The property taxes are paid and current. And I would respectfully ask that the commissioners sign the discharge of mortgage instrument on this property. If there are no questions, I'll move approval of resolution 272-21. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 272-21 has been adopted. Resolution number 273-21, resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Michael Holcomb. This property owner also received a home loan for $4,000 from Franklin County. The requirements of the loan have been satisfied. The property taxes are paid in current, and I would respectfully ask that the commissioners sign the discharge of mortgage instrument on this property. If there are no uh, questions, I'll move approval of resolution 273-21. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 273-21 has been adopted. Resolution number 274-21, resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Maxine Saxton. The property owner received a home loan for $15,000 from Franklin County. The requirements of the housing loan have been satisfied. The property taxes are paid in current. And I would respect respectfully ask that the commissioner sign the discharge of mortgage instrument on this property. If there are no questions, I'll move approval of resolution 274-21. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Resolution number 274-21 has been adopted. Resolution number 275-21. Resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Penny Layton. This property owner received a home loan for $6,689 from Franklin County. The requirements of the loan have been satisfied. The property taxes are paid in current. And I would respectfully ask that the commissioner sign the discharge of mortgage instrument on this property. If there are no questions, I'll move approval of 275-21. Second. Moved in second and voting. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Resolution number 275-21 has been adopted. Resolution number 276-21, resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Raymond Conkle. This property owner received a home loan for $2,905 from Franklin County. The requirements of the loan have been satisfied. The property taxes are paid in current. And I would respectfully ask that the commissioner sign uh, this discharge of mortgage instrument on the property. Um, if, I, if there are no further questions, I, or if there are no questions, I'm sorry, I'll approve the resolution 276 21. 
Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Resolution number 27621 has been adopted. Resolution number 27721. Resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Robert Gallion. This property owner received a home loan for $2,050 from Franklin County. The requirements of the housing loan have been satisfied. Property taxes are paid and current. And I would respectfully ask that the commissioners sign the discharge of mortgage instrument on this property. If there are no questions, I'll move approval of uh, resolution 27721. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Resolution number 27721 has been adopted. Resolution number 27821. Resolution authorizing the Board of Franklin County Commissioners to sign the attached discharge of mortgage instrument for Rita Karsten. Received a home loan for $15,000 from Franklin County. The requirements of the housing loan have been satisfied. The property taxes are paid in current. I would, and I would respectfully ask that the commissioner sign the discharge of mortgage instrument on this property. Thank you. If there are no questions, I'm going to approve a resolution 27821. I'll second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner O'Grady. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Resolution number 27821 has been adopted. And commissioners, if I may, just a friendly reminder that these discharges do require your physical signature so that I can notarize them for you. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Emergency Management Agency. Resolution number 27921. Resolution authorizing a consultant contract with Fred C. Bowditch to, for continued professional services related to critical infrastructure protection and private public partnerships in the amount of $50,000. Good morning, commissioners. Jeff Young representing Franklin County Emergency Management and Homeland Security. Before you is a resolution approving a renewal of the consulting contract with Fred C. Bowditch for critical infrastructure and public private partnership support to Franklin County organizations and emergency management and Homeland Security. This contract was originally in place as part of the Franklin County Office of Homeland Security and has been maintained at our combined agency as providing unique experience and capabilities, particularly in providing outreach and support to the nonprofit and new American communities. In the previous two years, Fred Bowditch has been instrumental in making these groups aware of Homeland Security grant opportunities and has been successful in approximately 20 diverse locations being awarded a combined um, award of approximately 2 million in direct grants, providing funding to support security enhancements to nonprofit organizations that are at high risk of terrorist attacks. This program has been successful in seeking to integrate the preparedness activities of nonprofit organizations with broader local, state, federal, and, um, uh, and federal preparedness efforts. I'll gladly answer any questions and ask for your approval of this resolution. If there are no questions, I'll move approval of resolution 279-20. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner O'Grady? Yep. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Commissioner <laughs> Brown. Yes. Resolution number, resolution number 27921 yeah. has been adopted. Thank you, Commissioners. I think that's a first after 12 and a half years. <laughs> Sorry, about Sorry about that, Director Young. <laughs> Emergency um, justice policy and programs. Resolution number 28021, resolution authorizing a contract with the University of Cincinnati for the provision of program evaluation and technical assistance for the fiscal year 2019 Second Chance Act grant addressing the needs of incarcerated parents and their minor children in the amount of $39,829.86. Good morning, commissioners. As you know, parental incarceration is the third most harmful adverse childhood experience affecting long-term health, economic well-being, and well-being of children across their lifespan. The University of Cincinnati will provide technical assistance to all partners on our Children of Incarcerated Parents grant, uh, and they'll collaborate on the grant along with provide evaluation services, including a final evaluation report of lessons learned. Pending any questions you might have, I respectfully request your approval of this contract with the University of Cincinnati. University of Cincinnati has done other work for us in this arena, haven't they? 
they have commissioner, they, they have the, quite the research institute down there and, and they really are leading the way as it, as it relates to kind of evidence-based practices in the criminal justice field. That's great. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, as I said the other day, go Bearcats. I will move approval of resolution 28021. Second. Move and second in voting, Commissioner Grady. Uh, yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Resolution number 28021 has been adopted. Thanks. Purchasing. <clears throat> resolution number 28121, <laughs> resolution approving purchases for various Franklin County agencies in the amount of $1,798,139.47. Good morning, commissioners. Megan Perry Ballonier, Director of Purchasing. And joining me this morning is Marlies Wicker, Interim Chief of the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion in Franklin County's Small and Emerging Business Coordinator. Commissioners, this resolution requests your approval of 68 purchase orders for which the County Auditor has pre-certified available funding. Good morning, Commissioners. This week, 18 out of 15 eligible purchase orders are being presented for award to small and emerging business enterprises. These eight purchase orders total $177,290, which equates to 53% of the eligible purchase order value and 34% of the eligible purchase order dollar amount. The eight purchase orders being presented for award to qualify vendors include five women business enterprise, two minority business enterprise, one small and emerging business enterprise, and the following agencies have increased supplier diversity of goods and services within Franklin County. Public facilities management, domestic relations and juvenile court, the engineer's office and sheriff. Commissioners, pending any questions, we respectfully request your approval of this resolution. If there are no questions, I will move approval of resolution 28121. Second. Moved and seconded voting. Commissioner Grady. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Resolution number 28121 has been adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Dean, anything else? Any journalizations or anything? No, Commissioner. Okay. Dean, I apologize uh, for that. My uh my wife had texted me, asked me a question, and I texted her back, yep, and then it came out of my mouth. <laughs> it was just odd timing, that's all. All, all is okay. forgiven. Okay. Um, any reporters on any media? Um, anybody have anything else? Otherwise, we are adjourned. Thank you, commissioners. Have a good day. Thank you, you. Have a good day, everyone. Be safe, be well.